Let's stand up, keep standing as we still in worship. Hallelujah. From verse 1 to 13. Hallelujah. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. And all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil. Give us of your oil. Give us of your oil. For our lamps are gone out. For our lamps are gone out. May your lamps never go out. May you keep oil burning in your lamps till that day in the name of Jesus. And, and uh, but the wise answered, saying, Not so. Lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell, to them that sell, to them that sell. The oil must be bought. <laughs> Hallelujah. It will cost you, cost you your sleep, cost you whatever is very expensive, it's very expensive oil. Hallelujah. The oil for priesthood. Constant priesthood will cost you. You will not lay down your lives unto death in the mighty name of Jesus. You won't love your life unto death. Hallelujah. So buy the oil now and don't sell it. Amen. Buy it in reserve. Buy for yourselves oil that don't go out. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I know you not. Watch, therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's amazing that the Lord did not put here, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. He loves to say that. Hallelujah. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Actually, change the song. Sell me oil in my lamp. It's not for free. Hallelujah. Sell me Be 
and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. Now noise and eyes with eyes on, and thou mayest see. Hallelujah. Come and lift up your hands. Say, oh Lord, send me that oil. Help me to purchase that oil. In the mighty name of Jesus, I want you to pray. You may not know what to have say, just pray. I need to buy that oil. Eternity demands that I buy that oil. Nothing in this world is more precious than me buying that oil.
When you wait on the Lord, you renew your strength. Hallelujah. Worship is waiting on the Lord. You don't have anxiety, you're peaceful because you worshiped. Hallelujah. And that's where the Lord is taking us to thank you. You see, five hours of study, and she could retain what she studied. So be a worshiper, be a priest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you are familiar, I'm sure, with Benny? Hmm? Hallelujah. I think I have one of his videos, seven hours of <laughs> Seven hours. Amen. And he wasn't bored. If it's you and I, you say, ah, seven hours. Hallelujah. <laughs> you are in a hurry to talk to God. Worship will bring you into his presence. And in his presence, there is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. So this is where God is taking us to at this time. We need to be worshippers. Amen. This is day two. I titled it, Let us remove the ashes on our altar of sacrifice. Amen. Who can tell me the ultimate sacrifice of the believer? Before we, we're going to remove the Old Testament, Leviticus says, what is our ultimate sacrifice? My pastor, I'm sure you know. What is our ultimate sacrifice? Just briefly. Okay. Um, I, I believe that our ultimate sacrifice is ourselves. Amen. It's ourselves. Is that all? Yes. Um, our sins, very powerful. Clap for the Lord, hallelujah. After ourselves, what is the next sacrifice? Do I see? Yeah. I am must have said that. Who knows? I'm sure you do. Praise. Or did you say pray? Praise. Praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, there's a song by uh, the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir. She said that, that song goes like this. I may not be able to sing it correctly. That he has, she has lost battles because of fear, she has lost some good friends. Um, she had been disappointed in life, but there were some things she didn't lose. She said, I never lost my hope. You know that song? I never lost my joy. I never lost my faith. Above all, I never lost my praise. Hallelujah. So we're going to be looking at the, 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 our role as priests tonight, our primary role. Amen. Before intercession, before uh, any other thing, our primary role, and I believe that's where the Lord says that we're failing Him. Hallelujah. We're failing to praise from the bottom of our hearts. Amen. Amen. So get ready to learn and get ready to change. Clap for the Lord. Amen. Ourselves. We give our money, we give our time, we give so many things. Amen. And then sometimes when we are unhappy, we start to murmur. <laughs> Lord, I gave you this, I gave you that, I gave you this, that, that, that. What are you going to give me? Look at me. How many of us know what I'm talking about? Maybe that's not how people murmur in different ways. Hallelujah. How can anybody even know that I'm a Christian? I don't think I'm going to church anymore. I pray, I do this, I do that. We must change. Hallelujah. Amen. Leviticus 6, where we were yesterday, from verse 8 to 13. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, 
command Aaron and his son, saying, This is the law of the burnt offering. It is a burnt offering because of the burning upon the altar all night, unto the morning, and the fire of the altar shall be burning in it. And the priest shall put on his put on his linen garment, and his linen breeches shall he put upon his flesh, and take off the ashes which the fire had consumed with the burnt offering on the altar. And he shall put them beside the altar. And he shall put off his garments and put on other garments and carry forth the ashes without the camp unto a clean place. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning. And lay the burnt offering in order upon it. And he shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offerings. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. Shall we say that? One to go. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. Amen. So we're looking at let us remove the ashes on our altar of sacrifice. Lift up your children and say, My Father. I know there are ashes on my altar. Help me to remove them in the name of Jesus. Amen. So what is killing the fire on our altar of sacrifice? I mean, the fire has to die before the ashes will pile up. Pile up. Is that not so? Amen. Are we listening? What is it that kills that fire? That makes it possible for the ashes to pile them such that they have to be removed. There are two things in this passage that the priests were commanded to do so that the fire of the altar will not die. Number one, the priest must constantly remove the ashes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This, we don't need to belabor this point. We have, we've all used firewood before. Amen. We know that if there are ashes, the fire will not catch them also. So the first thing is to remove those ashes. Leviticus 6 verse 10. And the priest shall put on his linen garment, and his linen trousers he shall put on his, on his body, and take off the ashes of the burnt offering, which the fire has consumed on the altar, and he shall put them beside the altar. If the priest did not remove the ashes, we all know what will eventually happen to that fire. It will die, right? The fire will die and the altar will be overwhelmed with ashes. I want us to pay some serious attention to something here that should change the way we personally look at things in our spiritual lives. In the first place, the ashes that the priest is commanded by God to remove come from his personal burnt offering. That was a personal. The pastor gave us that answer that first ourselves. Hallelujah. Personal burnt offering, which he chose to sacrifice to God. Somebody say, I choose. I, choose. I have chosen, I chosen to give myself to God. Jesus said something that we read yesterday in John chapter 10. He said, nobody took my life from me. I lay it on myself and I take it if I wanted to. Hallelujah. That's the danger. Hallelujah. The danger for us as New Testament saints that we are too free. Hallelujah. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we forget that God has not changed. He has given us freedom, but we shouldn't uh, take liberty for license. Hallelujah. That's another topic. Amen. So, in the first place, the ashes that the priest is commanded by God to remove from his, from his personal burnt offering, which he chose to sacrifice to God. Now, when I don't want to go into too much detail, but when you talk of burnt offering, it means that that sacrifice is completely burnt from the inside to everything.
nothing in that animal will be burnt on the altar. Nothing, it's not like the sin offering, you know, that the priest could eat. If you want to understand this thing, read Leviticus very well. Hallelujah. Uh, different offerings. But when it talks of burnt offering by the priest, it means everything, the inside of the animal, the head, the legs, everything will be burnt unto God. And God will smell it. Mm. Hallelujah. May God smell your sacrifices and be happy. Amen. Certainly, there have been wonderful sacrifices that we have personally made to God. That's for sure. Is that not so? There is no believer. It doesn't matter how ignorant that believer is that doesn't sacrifice something. Even as we're sitting here tonight, it is a sacrifice. Because it's cold out there. Amen. Amen. So it's a sacrifice to come out and listen to what God has to tell us. And because of that, we have shared some intimate and wonderful moments with God. One good thing about God is that every sacrifice is returned. Hallelujah. God will always return the sacrifice a hundredfold. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, the most important sacrifice of the New Testament believer priest is the sacrifice of praise. Put it down. Amen. Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13. After we have given our lives to the Lord, we must learn that the most important sacrifice is the sacrifice of praise. Wherefore, Jesus also from verse 12, Hebrews 13, verse 12, Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp bearing his reproach. For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. By him therefore, let us offer, can we, can we read that together, verse 15. By him therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Continually. Remember, Leviticus 6.13 says what? The fire, can you break it up? Leviticus 6 13. I want you to compare it to Hebrews 13 15. The fire, can you read it? The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. Our praise must continually, whether we are hungry or full, just say continually. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't, 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 don't. Whether we are hungry or full, louder. Whether we are happy or sad, louder. Whether we are well or sick, louder, louder, louder. Whether we are married or single, barren or fruitful, rich or poor. prophecy. This is what he told me to tell his people that that's where we are failing him. And we know that. Not just you, me, Pastor, Daddy, all of us. That as humans we forget that God does not owe us anything. We were created to worship him. Hallelujah. And so we, we, we develop this attitude that he owes. He owes you nothing, no. Even if you are the one bring, you are the one sponsoring all the churches on earth, God does say what you resent. Hallelujah. Because he never owes people anything. We owe him worship. Amen. 
Now before I go, I'll just lift up your hands because we have done my own. Say, Father, for every moment that I have murmured, that I have not been a true priest, that I've been depressed, that I've forgotten you, but you will keep me in the name of Jesus. I want you to take two minutes and just repent. Repent of he said, that is where we are failing him. We complain too much. We get so easily discouraged, so easily diverted by that devil who will be showing you all the things that are wrong in your body, in your home, in your husband, wife, in your children, in your finances. He will show you. Yeah. And then you agree with him. Forgive me, Father. Forgive us. In Jesus' mighty name, we plead the blood of Jesus on our souls. Clap for the Lord. Jesus, that he might sanctify us with his own blood. Hallelujah. That he might set us apart for God with his own blood. Hallelujah. Paid a terrible price, he suffered so that you can be a child of God, so that I can be a child of God. We already know that. Hallelujah. But we always forget that. Look, that's a fact that must be in your head 24 7. Hello? Hello? It doesn't matter what you are going through 24 7, you must just remember that there is nothing that is more precious than that precious blood. It's life that he laid down for us. Hallelujah. What have you even given to God that you're complaining? Amen? Amen? You, the Bible says you have not yet resisted unto God. You have not yet gone on the cross. Wait until they cut off your head for the sake of Christ, then you can complain. Even those people that allow their heads to be cut off from God, they go rejoicing. We need to move to that to the next level in our Christian walk. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I believe our Father has spoiled us because we know He's our Father and He has everything. Amen. Amen. And, and we behave typically like spoiled kids. When they don't have their way, everything will be dear. Hallelujah. Today we are forgiven in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at Revelation 5. Revelation 5. From verse 1, and I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book. Neither to look thereon, and I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. One of the elders said unto me, We not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. Do I hear amen? amen. And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood the Lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns, and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the air. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps. Pay attention to the rest of that scripture. 
and golden vials. I think we should read it together from verse 8. One to go. And when he had taken the book, the four days and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood. Out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne. And the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I sing blessing and honor, glory and power be unto him that seated upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. The four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Church, this is a worship service in heaven. When God is speaking about us as priest or high priest or whoever he wants us to be, he wants us to join this company. It is a privilege. It is a privilege to be able to wake up and say, well, this is the Lamb to join the company in heaven. Worshipping the King of Kings. Worshipping the Lord of Lords. Thanking him who was slain so that he can give you power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. He was slain to give you everything. You must learn to, you know, appropriate those things by not seeing yourself around here. Because you are not here. You are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You need to remove yourself from this material world. You are too much here. And so you cannot access what he has done. Hallelujah. I'm trying to look for, you know, I don't know how many of you watch the celebration of the Queen's uh, uh, 70th year on the throne. If you haven't watched it, go and watch it. Go and look for it on YouTube. The Queen, she's now 96. They say she's the longest reigning monarch in our time, 70 years on the throne. Hallelujah. Come and see the whole of Britain. A human being. People, come and see the crowd. They just know it's a privilege for me to be part of this celebration. The queen doesn't even know they are there. It's just waving in my But the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, He is calling you, He say, Come up here, come and worship with the redeemed. Hallelujah. And he knows your name. Amen. That's the amazing thing.
deliver God. As many as we are, he knows the name of everybody on earth. He knows the name of all the stars in heaven. He knows you. He knows what you are, forget about what you are going through. He knows you are special. He knows, especially the day you say, I'm born again. He knows that you are blood bought yeah. and that you are different, yeah. even from the king or queen of wherever, yeah. that you are special. Yeah. As somebody, we don't even know where she's going. We don't know how, I don't know her relationship with God. But people, come and see people. I spent five, ten minutes watching that thing on CNN and I said, my God, if only you and I would know how the Lord would cherish just one minute of your time, one hour of your time in 24 hours just to say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I love you. Lord, you are so wonderful. You are awesome. And if you get to a point when you are so connected to him that when you lift up your hands and even if you don't lift up your hands, maybe you're just in the toilet. And you remember, you say, Lord, I love you. He will respond. Yeah. He will tell you, I love you too. Sometimes you're just worshiping. He will just say, thank you. He will just say, I love you. Because you're worshiping. You need to wake up. Hallelujah. We, God is not a witch doctor. You see now, we are talking of a God of relationship. He wants to have a relationship with you. And he hates complaining. Look, look when we're talking of, in terms of relationship, whether you are married or not, I'm sure you are living with somebody. Father, mother, sister, or somebody, roommate, you are always grumpy. In the morning you are grumpy. In the afternoon you are grumpy. That person will move out. Hallelujah. Amen. I can't believe this one is always sad. So God wants you. It doesn't matter what, what you are going through. God is bigger than that. The day you understand that you are dealing with God that is bigger than you and bigger than the whole world and bigger and greater than the riches. The only thing we understand is money. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't, don't, don't let money rule you. Praise the Lord. Whether you have it or you don't have it, money rules people. The wealthy and the poor, they are both ruled by money. So the day you understand that the most important thing in your life is your salvation and your relationship with God, you'll be delivered. Clap for the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to go home. You know, uh, this Revelation 5, I can never have enough of it. Go home, meditate on it, and see the, the, the beauty of this scripture. How they were singing to the Lord. Hallelujah, the four beasts, the elders, everything in heaven, every creature worshiping him, including the prayers of the saints. Amen. Amen. So the thing is, you need to understand that we are not here. Some of us are not here. 24 7, I'm not here. Hallelujah. And I mean that. Even as I'm talking to you now, I'm not here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You should know where you belong. At the right hand of God. Always in the presence of God. And that is what is going to solve all your problems. Amen. You see, there may have even been some powerful encounters with God because of some personal sacrifices you have made. We could have got some powerful revelations or even miracles. Is that not so? I told you God always returns sacrifices. Especially if they were given with joy, God will issue rewards for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. 
But if we allow our past sacrifices and beautiful rewards to continue to fuel our spiritual lives and growth, both the sacrifices and the rewards will soon expire and burn out. Ever say continually. Say it again continually. Yes, I prayed last year. Say continually. I prayed yesterday. Continually. I praise God last night. Continually. I forgive you. Continually. It doesn't. I, I gave my thanks last month. Continually. Don't just rely on what you did yesterday. Hallelujah. That's why the Lord told the children of Israel their manna must be gathered daily. Hallelujah. Because relying on yesterday, the, 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 that, that, that one is yesterday. It will expire, it will burn out. It's a daily sacrifice. Amen. If we believe that those past efforts will continue to fuel the fire, then the fire will eventually die out and the ashes will pile up. Because of time, I'll just ask you to write down Revelation chapter 2. There, the Lord says to the church uh, in Ephesus, says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and has found them liars, and has born, and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored, and has not fainted. Hello? Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, repent. How can you tell somebody who is faithful, who is patient, who is laboring to repent? Hallelujah. Because he has left his first love, which is that you know that that joy of salvation, that love for God. Hallelujah. Everybody receives it as salvation. Is that not so? In fact, you 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 are, you are so happy to be saved that when you wake up, you want to tell the whole world I'm now a Christian. You thank God, you bless Him. But as Satan begins to buffet you with problems, you take your eyes off your first love. You now say, mm, you are now a you're now a bishop for the sake of being a bishop. And now a pastor for the sake of being a pastor, you labor. You are now an intercessor, you are just in the choir, you just, in fact, you, your heart is not even in the song anymore. You are just there for the sake of being there. The Lord says, remove the ashes. Go back to the first love. Many of us, we serve the Lord without worshiping him. Hallelujah. It's not a good idea. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When you see us as ministers, we stand here to preach to you. It's just one hundred eighth of what we need to do. First, we must greet our Father. Otherwise, we stand here and minister flesh to you. We minister nonsense to you. Hallelujah. We must connect with heaven. Every priest and you also, you need to connect. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Every day, that's your first love. Praise the Lord. Imagine, you know, when you read this Revelation 2, the, the, the message to the church at Ephesus is, is frightening. And it looks like this is the first church to be raptured. They labor, they are patient, they are true, they are holy. But he says, I still have an issue with you. You have forgotten me, your first love. Hallelujah. We replace Jesus with activities. Be careful, especially those of you on the drum instruments, uh, singing. Be careful, don't replace him with anything you do. 
Amen. 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 Lift up your hands and pray that prayer. We the blessing and give to the poor. You remember that, that that one that was the Pharisee that was that was praying. I fast twice a week. I do this and that. Say, Lord, whatever I have replaced you with activities, have mercy on me. You have to be number one in my life. Not my ability to pray, my ability to teach or preach or give or love my neighbor or give to the poor. You are number one, oh Lord. Oh Lord, have mercy on us. In Jesus' mighty name, return to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, to the Lord. Amen. These experiences we have had are wonderful. It's wonderful to serve the Lord. I'm not belittling what we do for the Lord. Hallelujah. But nothing we do for Him must replace Him. Nothing. Hallelujah. How many of you know that it's a jealous God? Yeah. Huh? Do you know that ministry can replace God? Yes. Even ministry. I'm not talking of now our relationships. If all I want would be is bishop and bishop and do this and do that, and we're very busy. We must find time for Him. Hallelujah. Otherwise, there will be ashes on the altar. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Apart from that, you know, God is always doing new things. Praise the Lord. So if you are too busy to fellowship with Him, I mean, of course, understand the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Of course, it has become a song that we sing from our head. But <laughs> it's a serious prayer. We must fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We fellowship with each other, we fellowship with the husbands or wives or children, but that personal fellowship with the Lord, you must go look for it too. If you have lost it, hallelujah. Amen. Because that is where He will show you new things. That is where He will take you. He told Apostle John, Come on, hither. I want to show you something. Was he the only apostle? No. He was not the only believer around. But the Bible says John was in the spirit. On the last day, he heard a voice from heaven. This is what it says. I'm Alpha and Omega. Beginning and the end. And behold, I live forevermore. You, you need revelation. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why I was asking how many of you went home last night and still worshipped. Apart from what we received here. Amen. You need God will always show you. God is eager to show you new things. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, Father, Father. make me a worshiper. Amen. Help me to be in the spirit. 24-7. Help me, Help me to grow above, to grow above those, things those things that are diverting me. John was in the spirit. On the last day, he heard a voice from heaven. This is what he says, I'm Alpha and Omega. What we are reading in the book of Revelation now was shown to one person. Hallelujah. How can that person backslide? He saw too much of heaven. Hello? Are you listening? When God, when you are, when you are in worship, even some of us that are in the choir, I wonder how much time we spend with God. Hallelujah. The choir member. The choir member. I want you to notice something though, and I'm not bragging. When I step here, the atmosphere changes. Ah, you're a bishop. It should be like that with you. 
Are you hearing me? Because this is not where I start the worship. My worship starts from morning till now. Hallelujah. Even when I was working, when I was a lecturer, as my husband, all night I would stay in God's presence, worship, pray, hallelujah, feed my spirit. Amen. And when the students noticed that, they used to come to my office and say, Doctor, we want you to come and lead our worship to this house. What is wrong with you people? I am here to teach. And they will drag me into their fellowship. Let the presence of God be felt when you are leading worship club for the Lord. I swear about our voices. I don't have the best voice and I don't care. But the fire will flow. Hallelujah. It's not about good voice or good word. Just practice worship on your own. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wake up. You know, when you, when you have that desire to, to practice quiet time with God, the Lord will help you and accommodate, give you a timetable. You can wake you up 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock, start to worship. Before you, you say, ah, yeah, this is my opportunity, God woke me up. Oh Lord, you remember my boss, deal with him. <laughs> God doesn't need you to say that. You worship, you will be amazed what will happen. Either the boss will, will, will bow or break or bend, because you have gone into your father's presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Carry his presence to your place of work. You'll be amazed what you, nobody will be able to do you nonsense there. When you step into your office, the demons will fly out. Because of the presence of God in your life. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. He wants to upgrade us. He's always doing new things. Hallelujah. He wants to inform you about what is going on in your life, in your family, in your body. He wants to inform you. He, he can tell you anything. But you have to be available. Amen. Spiritually, physically, emotionally. In Isaiah 43, from verse 18 to 26, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Isaiah 43. Somebody said, I will not keep remembering the past. I will not keep remembering the past. He said, Don't remember the former things. The problem with former things is that they have, whether they are good or bad, they have the, the potential to distort the new thing. Hallelujah. Clap for the Lord, giving the glory. Some of us, we are still in past success. Hallelujah. Past success, past whatever, or past failure, past hurts. It says, forget it. Hallelujah. Neither consider the things of old. Hey, church, stop thinking of those things, whether they were good or bad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Past sacrifices, past failures, past what, what, what. Leave that alone. Behold, I will do a new thing. I never want a new thing. Then forget the old. Hallelujah. Forget the past. Amen. I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Hallelujah. Verse 21. It says, These people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. So your first duty, if you want to forget the past, is to show forth his praise. 
to be a worshiper. Now, it says, but thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob. Thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. Thou hast not brought me the small cattle of thy burnt offerings, for you and I praise. He says, you are tired of me. And it's true, some of you, you can't just say, Father, I'm tired of you. But you, you say it in your heart, and you can see. Say, Father, let me not be tired of you. Father, and don't be tired of me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 He says, you have not brought me any offering. Verse 25, I even I am he that blotted out thy transgressions. For my own sake, I took away your sins so you can belong to me. You are there looking for X, Y, Z. Hallelujah. And will not remember thy sins. I don't know if you are feeling forgiven tonight. I'm too glad you are forgiven. I said, no. God did not do this, God. Ah. Even if he never did any other thing for me in life, he has forgiven me. Amen. He has forgiven me. Amen. And you know what? I am sure if I die now, I'm going to heaven. Amen. And that's what you should be concerned with. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm glad I'm forgiven. I'm glad I'm forgiven. May God take your mind off the things that have become God in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. He says, put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Hallelujah. God is saying, what do you have to say about what I just said? It's not an accusation, it's a fact that you have forgotten me. Hallelujah. God doesn't want you to keep thinking about what was, but rather what is going to be. That's why he gave us Isaiah 64 verse 4. He says, you, are, you, don't see, you haven't seen anything yet. Even if you think you have money now, just wait until you start to worship. Even if you think you are happy now, just wait until you become a worshiper. Even if you think your children are doing well now, wait until you start worshiping. Even if you think you are strong in your body now, wait until you become a worshiper, a true priest. Clap for the Lord, hallelujah. You will be amazed. Wait until you stop complaining. We are so addicted to speaking in tongues and looking for stuff. Start to worship. Hey, the tongues we have spoken in this church, they are enough to bulldoze the kingdom of Satan. It is time to worship God. Come and lift up your hands and say, Lord, make me a worship. I want to see what you have in stock for me. Amen. When you meditate on Isaiah 64, it says, Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man beside God. Only God knows. Amen. Hallelujah. Tomorrow I will tell you, I will show you how to access those things. Praise the Lord. He has, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 29 verse 29, the secret things belong to God. It's amazing, 29, 29, you can never forget that. Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secret things, they belong to God. The things that are revealed, they belong to us. And unto our children forever that we may do all the works of this law. How are those things going to be revealed? By closeness to God in worship. You think Benin it doesn't know the word? In fact, for a long time I said, ah, does this one ever teach? Well, when he starts to teach, you know he's the man of the world. He goes into serious worship. And come and see miracles. Hallelujah. May God open our understanding. May God break that addiction to complaining and praying in tongues that don't even reach heaven. Hallelujah. Because if, you are, if your tongues are full of complaints, they're going nowhere. Hallelujah. It is time to think about what God wants to do. 
get curious. What is the meaning of Isaiah 64 verse 4? Has anybody even asked question? Hello? Have you meditated on Isaiah 64 verse 4? Say, God, what is it that you want to show me? I am sure you ask me in anxiety. No, start to worship. Start to praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Become curious. Develop a hunger and a thirst for what is hidden in this Isaiah 64. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Once you start to worship, you begin to fuel the, your passion for God. Hallelujah. And that passion will fuel the fire on your altar of prayer. To worship, you worship, you worship, and then the Holy Spirit will begin to show you how to pray, how to access what God is hiding here. Somebody say, I'm going to access it. I am before this year runs out, even after this year, I'll continue to access whatever God has hidden here in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Worship, and then you can call on Him. The two things that Allah keeps complaining about. They don't call on my name. They don't praise me. They don't call on my name. Read the Psalms. Worship him and then start to call on his name. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Hallelujah. Amen. So, I'm not saying we shouldn't be praying tongues or hear me well. I'm just saying add worship to your tongues. Add praise, add the word, add some wood, hallelujah. That brings us to the second thing that can kill your fire, lack of wood, lack of fresh wood in the fire. Leviticus 6 verse 12, the fire on the altar must be kept burning. Ever say continually. continually. Louder. Continually. Say continually. continually. It must not go out. Every morning the priest is to add firewood and arrange the burnt offering of the fire on the fire and burn the fat of the fellowship offering on it. So the call for the priest was not just to remove the ash. But they had to keep the fire burning by adding fresh wood. If they only removed the ashes, then only half the work was being done. Don't just remove the ashes tonight, bring a fresh wood. Hallelujah. If this is true in the physical world, would it not be true for us in the spiritual life? We are not called to just remove the ashes, but we are called to keep the fire burning in our life by feeding it with fresh sacrifices of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not telling you to stop dwelling on the good things that you have experienced in the past. It's good to, I mean, from time to time, we visit those testimonies, but keep the fire burning. Hallelujah. Feed your fire every day from now till Jesus comes. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Peter 2, 9. You must feed that fire. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Especially that it has become a special word from the Lord. Let's read it together. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. No, 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 no. We'll go back, go back, go back. That's all I need. Somebody say, I'm chosen. I'm chosen. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm a royal priesthood. That is a priest that reigns. Hallelujah. I'm a holy person. A peculiar person. Hallelujah. I should show forth God's praises who have called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. The reason why you should praise God is that he saved you. That is the first reason. Not because you bought a new car. It's good to say thank you, Jesus, for that. Come on, say thank you, Jesus. 
For all that you have blessed me with. See my nice new dress. You 
close door because it cannot force you. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Holy Spirit. We all do it to me, including me. Say, Holy Spirit, for all the times that I have swallowed the song of praise that should flow from me, forgive me. Don't abandon me. Please forgive my ignorance. Forgive my unbelief. Forgive me. Amen. You are feeling better. So am I. God for the Lord. I used to be worse than you. I will swallow that song. I will listen to this week. Leave me alone. I don't even want to sing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. God is faithful. So most of the times we actually don't feel like praising God. Is that not so? Most of the time, there are too many things on earth, too many things in our lives, too many things around us that close, that allow us uh, not to want to keep the mood on the altar. But we resist that factor tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. We shouldn't, we shouldn't allow unhappiness, dissatisfaction, uh, or depression to keep us from praising God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Wave your hands and say, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my spirit, soul, and body. Praise the Lord, my spirit, soul, and body. Praise the Lord, my spirit, soul, and body. Shout. Sacrifice of praise. When you feel like crying, when you feel like complaining, you because you have understanding that this is a trick of the enemy. I need to praise God. Then you burst out in praise. He values it. Clap for the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you know also for for those priests that need to go and gather wood in those days? Do you know that it was not easy? Huh? I mean, Israel, it's the desert. They have to go look for wood in dangerous places. And the wood must be there every morning. Hallelujah. And so it's the same way. It's not all the time that we feel like praising God. You see me preaching it and dancing. You think it's every morning when I wake up that I want to be like up on now. Hallelujah. But I have understanding that I have to do it. It's not about feeling. It's a command. Hello. Hallelujah. It's not about feeling, church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I mean, it's not every time you feel like eating, right? Even when you are not fasting. But you know you must eat to stay alive. Is that not so? It's not every time you feel like sleeping. But to force yourself to sleep. Come on now. It's not every time that you, you feel like giving money to your children or paying school fees. Come on. I, I was asking somebody today, I said, I said, this one that you're always shifting from one house to another, is it up to you? And if you are here and you do that trick, because we experience that when we're renting out our flat, there are people who stay and then they will pay us for two months, the next month they vanish, they don't want to pay. Then they move. Then daddy said we will never rent out that flat again. <laughs> because it's, it's a trick, especially the students. They will lavish all their money. And then I said, this one that you are shifting, is it that you don't want to pay your landlord? Is it saying no? You think you are smart. It's a big sin because that, that sin is going to wait for you and your children in the future. Because Jesus says, if you don't know how to treat the people's, other people's property, property well, nobody will give you your own. So stop stealing. Hallelujah. I don't know who that is for. But I said, stop it. If that is what you are doing, and it just occurred to me that this might be what this person is doing. 
How can you move to a place after a month you shift? After two months you shift? No. And so you have to pay your rent even if you don't feel like paying it. Is that not so? Pay school fees even if you don't feel like paying school fees. Amen. You pay your doctor even if you don't feel like paying your doctor. Even if you don't feel like praising God, praise him. Clap for the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise him anyway. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, the priests were not afraid to go in the wilderness to look for that wood. They were spiritually minded. They did not, they were not afraid to suffer. They did not uh, uh, love their lives unto death. Don't say, I don't feel like praising God. Do it. Amen. 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 Honestly, when we look at our lives, we see things that discourage us. That's okay. But praise God. Amen. If this is your case, step back and ask yourself if you have understood the effort to remove the ash from the altar and put fresh wood. Somebody say, I understand today. I must make that effort. Amen. In Psalm 50, verse 5 to 6, God says, Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Hallelujah. And the heavens shall declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself. Do you think God always wants to bless you? Come on now, church. If God behaves, then we we behave. Do you think you always feel like blessing? Huh? Look at uh, somebody stood there and said, when we are not faithful, God is faithful. Is that not so? So you better change. It's not about, I don't feel like praising God. I believe that our life of praise will change as from today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. So do not, do, do you, I mean, uh, you need to, you need to come to a place where you understand this God. Hallelujah. Stop following him by your feelings. Part of the problem is that we don't know his word. Understand him. Can two walk together and say they be agreed? Understand who God is. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me tonight? Somebody say, Father, I understand who you are. Amen. Praise the Lord. So you need to understand who he is. You need to help. You need to follow him. Amen. Pastor. Pastor Asen. Can you please hold and pray for her? Can you please, Pastor, can you please help that woman? Just pray for her. Pray that madness out. Clap for the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Jeremiah 9, verse 23 says, Let God say the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glorieth glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me. Hallelujah. Say, Father, let me understand you. Say it seven times. Let me understand. Number three. It's a big trap. Hallelujah. Learn to worship God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You need to learn to understand Him, study His Word, 
worship and the act of worship will allow you to know what he wants and what he doesn't want. Amen. He will speak to you. God wants to speak to you. How many of us want to hear God every day? Worship him. Hallelujah. Make an effort to read his word, to, to, to know him. Hallelujah. And, and then, apart from that, make an effort to serve him. Amen. Worship is one. But thank God that we are waking up, praising, uh, evangelism, um, um, what else? Outreach. Um, no, where do they go? Zoo Park, hospital, uh, the youth. Make an effort to serve them. Choir, usher, somebody say, Father, I will serve you. Gladly. 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 Oh. Hallelujah. If you are in the choir, serve him gladly. Amen. Make sure you worship him by yourself at home. If you are an usher, serve him gladly. Amen. Look at Psalm 50. I'm trying to rush. Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows. <laughs> Amen. And call upon me in the day of trouble. Say, if you will offer me thanksgiving and serve me, find something to do for me with gladness. In the day of trouble, I will rescue you. Instead of sitting down there and moaning, offer him thanksgiving. Say thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at verse 16. Psalm 50, verse 16. But unto the wicked, God said, What has thou to do to declare my status? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Say thou hatest instruction. Somebody say, I don't hate instruction. Tell your neighbor, I don't hate instruction. I don't hate instruction from heaven. I love what God is teaching me now. How many of you will start to praise God? Shout hallelujah. Praise Him. And see whether your situation will not change. He says, Offer to me thanksgiving, pay your vows. Look. You just remember Anna. Anna used to mama. I'm going to go to her tomorrow. Oh Lord, just give me a child. This Perdina is a problem. Perdina is mocking me. God, God did the answer. Until she went and made a vow. So okay, God, give me a child, I will give you. Just give me a child. I'll give you. I know you have a need. And when she gave the child to God, what did she do? Who can tell me what she did? She praised God. Hallelujah. Hey. What an attitude. If it was you and I, I don't even know whether this, 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 this church is of God. How can they give me a child? And, hey, hey. Ha! <laughs> Hallelujah. She praised God. Amen. Please write down 1 Samuel chapter 2. From verse 1 to 11. The praises she showered on God after donating her child. And then she came every year to make clothes for the child. Hallelujah. She didn't say, oh Eli, it's your responsibility now. She was bringing things to the child. And then verse 21 says, God visited her again and gave her how many more children? Five. Hallelujah. Who is going to praise God tonight? Who? I will worship my God. I will shout hallelujah. Me I go worship my God. My God do well for me. Hallelujah. When you wake up tomorrow morning and the devil is whispering nonsense to you, just shut up, devil. I go worship my papa. I go shout hallelujah. Me I go worship my God. My God do well for me. God for your father. Hallelujah. for your sake. Because your eyes are being opened. Your 
food to that fire. You're cleaning your ashes out. You get it fresh food. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Ooh. Are you making any effort to add fresh food? Yes. Somebody say yes. God does not want half a sacrifice. That's the next thing. Don't add half. Oh, hallelujah. Remember that what we were reading in Leviticus says the whole bunch of friend. Amen. God doesn't want half. Don't let it be a half-hearted thing. Put your hand on your heart. Say, Father, Father. take my heart completely. Yeah. When I start to praise you, yes, let it come completely yes. from my heart. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. The fire does not burn for nothing on the altar. There must be a sacrifice. And that's why Pastor started by saying, we are the sacrifice. We are the living sacrifice. Hallelujah. And then you offer praises. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When we say we are on fire for Jesus, we can say there is a strong presence of God in our lives, which is the evidence that God is moving in every part of our life. May, may you receive God in every part of your life in the name of Jesus. Is there a sacrifice of your life that is worthy to be consumed only by God? How will I really discover what God really wants? That's the next step. Hallelujah. Again, worship. I must say worship. Worship. It says in Jeremiah 29, verse 11 to 13, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Now, then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me, and find me, when ye shall search me. Ah, that is now your Isaiah 64 verse 4. Look, get rid of that devil look of depression. How will you find time to do all this if you are depressed? To seek him, search for him with your whole heart. When half of the heart is full of sorrow. Somebody said today, I renounce sorrow. I renounce depression. I renounce ignorance. In the name of Jesus. You know, I, we're still going to talk about this python spirit on Sunday. I'll we'll finish it on Sunday, hopefully. When they creep on you, you start with little, 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 little sorrow, sadness, if you don't nip it on the board, you don't get rid of it, it will sorrow you. Hallelujah, get rid of it. We are not people of sorrow, hallelujah. It's not part of the agenda of God for our lives, clap for the Lord, amen. Amen. I we so finish, I want to finish with the story of Jericho. How many of you have Jerichos in your life that must move tonight? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hmm. Hallelujah. But how did Joshua know what to do? Amen. Amen. When you get home to read Joshua chapter 6, amen. Hallelujah. Read Joshua chapter 6. You don't have time to read all of the story. Amen. Now, Jericho was a very powerful fortified city with strong thick walls that would accommodate five chariots running on them at the same time. That situation in your life is a Jericho walk. Hallelujah. I, will, I want you to listen to this last part. It's, 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 you've done everything. In fact, you have prayed. You have sown seed, maybe. You have given your time. You have fasted. The world is still there. Hallelujah. And so, when the children of Israel were approaching that wall, God spoke to Joshua and said, 
this is what you are going to do. You and the children of Israel, you must march around that wall once every day for six days. Don't say anything. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, you have said enough to God about that wall. Shut up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Be still and know that it's God. If there is a, something you've prayed and prayed and prayed about, it's time to keep quiet. So march around the wall. Uh, once every day for six days. Nobody talks. Isn't that crazy? Hallelujah. Imagine pastors telling us to mass <laughs> rap into don't talk. Somebody will like And God said, mm -hmm. 
let him perish with his family. You don't need to stay. That wall of Jericho needs the praise of your father. Yeah. You have done everything. I told you the other day, the Lord told me to worship you for seven days. And there was a reason for that. <laughs> I don't want to share it because it's too much. Amen. It's because of a particular human being in my family. And God said, worship me. And on the, on the eighth day, I opened my mouth and I began to release words that I did not know were there. And I knew that it was not me. Hallelujah. Just worship God. Stop praying about that wall of Jericho. Hallelujah. Amen. Worship God and thank Him for the victory. Look at Psalm 131. We will soon pray. Let's rise up on our feet. Hallelujah. Do you imagine? You know, okay, it, it, when, when we're, when, as we're talking about the children of Israel and Jericho, do you know that before they got to Jericho, they have been fighting all kinds of wars. Huh? And they have been winning. Is that not so? But this one, God said, you are not going to fight here. I will, I will go before you, before you go inside. Amen? So when you worship and the wars fall, then you cannot do warfare. God will supply the bullets. Amen. And God for the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody said, Kings and priests, 
is one of so. But there is a king of kings. And you know, those demons are not stupid, though. They know they are right. They know if there is a covenant in place. So you, you wake up, you bind them, you fast, you rebuke them, you kick them, you sleep, they come again. What is going on? So God is saying, let's not be proud, let's not be haughty. Do you know what Jesus says something? He says, I agree with your adversary. Hallelujah. When your adversary knows that you have done something or there is something in place, say, I agree. Just agree. It is true. But my father is able to finish you. Amen. That is where worship comes in. Amen. Amen. So say, Lord. Lord. Come on, say, Lord. Lord. My heart is not proud. My eyes are not haughty. Concern myself with matters too great or too awesome for me to understand. Begin to, I want you, before we move on, just lift up your hands and pray in tongues on that one. Pray, pray, pray loud. And I thank you that you are not allowing me to concern myself with something that I don't.
the world of fair flats, the world of Jericho, the Lord of hosts. You see that? The Lord of hosts. And the God that is in charge of all the armies. Our God, the fighter. The one who fights and wins. The one who is not afraid of a fight. The one who slaps the, the battles. Hallelujah. The Lord of hosts. of the Lord. Come and see the desolations he has made in the earth. You, could, if you see, when you want to understand this battle, think of Jericho. Think of 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Hallelujah. Think of some of the battles that God fought for. His, think of the Red Sea. Think of Pharaoh. What, what could the children of Israel, what could they have done in front of the Red Sea? Huh? Come on now. God said, move. Move, I am here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, verse 9 says, He makes wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaks the bones. He cut the spear in sunder. He burned the chariots in fire. Be still. Be what? Be still. I know that I am God. I will be exalted. I will be healed. And exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. Be still. It's good to pray. We have prayed and continue to pray. But in that battle, wait and let God do his own. When you see that a battle has resisted you, you have done, you have exhausted your strength, give it to the Lord and see what will happen. And how we give it to the Lord is by worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed tonight? From glory to glory, He's changing me. He's changing me. <laughs> Let's wait for the words before we say another thing. <laughs> hallelujah! 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 Praise the Lord.
me up. And when he went, he knew that it was difficult, he went to pray and praised him. Hallelujah. And then he said, Now I'm ready. Hallelujah.
Aleluya. Aleluya. Thank you, Jesus. Aleluya. We're going to worship now for the next 10 minutes or so.
Amen. We're going to thank him for his blood that he shed for us. Praise the Lord. Thank him for that every day of your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you for the cross.
song day in, day out until you understand what he did for you. Hallelujah. From your heart. Amen. Hello. I don't mean to insult you. Don't think I'm saying you don't understand. Many times we think we know. But until we begin to appreciate what he did for us from the heart, we will never really appreciate it. I want you to write Revelation 5 on this and read it over and over again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And sing this song. Sing it to him. You will, see, you will feel a new connection with heaven. Your faith will be renewed. Your strength will be renewed. In fact, you will be healed as you sing it. Hallelujah. You will be healed. You will be delivered. Hallelujah. You will begin to sleep better. You, as you sing it in the morning, in the night before you sleep, read that scripture. Just, you see, until you understand that you are no longer a slave to the devil. Hallelujah. By the reading of what the Lord has done for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, these days I really spend time in God's presence a lot. I go from one worship song to another. Even to start the Zoom now, I just bring in songs of worship that I know have ministered to me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just allow those, there are people that are anointed to sing. Somebody wrote this song. Somebody wrote this one. Is that not so? Let's take, let's make use of their ministry. Get on YouTube, make use of their ministry. And get rid of fears and anxieties and worried. You are blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. of days. Amen. Are you going to sing and dance tonight? From your heart? Just two more minutes and then we have to done. Hallelujah. Yes, he's an Glory and power Near to the ancients of day From every nation To every nation All of creation Bow before the
the grace to practice what you have to learn. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The grace to just wake up and just worship your Father for who He is. You just bless Him. Receive that grace in the mighty name of Jesus. The grace to just fall in love with the Lord every day as you worship Him. To fall in love with Him for what He has done for you. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Falling in love with him, falling in love with him, over and over again. I have been falling in love with him, falling in love with him, over and over again. My Jesus gets sweeter and sweeter with the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord. for 
for you. The Lord is concerned. So my people are heavy. They are unhappy because they don't know me. But he has opened your understanding tonight. You will know that there is nothing that is worth being depressed about in this world. If you have Jesus, you have everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forever. Practice your priesthood because high priesthood is coming. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, let us be quick. Take all the papers they give you. Make sure you have something to work with. Sing unto the Lord. Hallelujah. We're coming tomorrow. Amen. Yes.